A video I did a couple years ago, I made this knife and I used this chisel, this very flat, very hard chisel to make the blade with. Now, a problem I had when I went to put the guard on was I couldn't drill through it with a standard drill bit. My drill bits wouldn't pierce this hardened steel. I got a comment in the video saying uh, if you take a regular uh, carbide drill bit for masonry and sharpen it, it'll drill through that. Of course, me being me, I said, that doesn't work. And I dismissed it out of hand without even trying it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually try to do that. I've got a blade set up in my table saw. This is just an ordinary tile cutting blade. I've also picked out a couple of drill bits and I'm gonna to try to sharpen these to see if they'll actually drill through that steel. To try to sharpen this, I'm gonna do it the way I'd normally sharpen a regular twist drill. That's by eye holding it against the sharpening wheel until I figure that it is actually sharp. The next one is a higher quality one. I know it has good carbide, but it is very dull to begin with. So I have a little bit more grinding to do on this one. All right, I got some oil put on there and I'll try it out and see how it goes. Okay, well, I'm impressed. It actually made it all the way through. Uh, pretty clean looking hole too. I'm going to have a look at the bit and see if it sustained any damage. It did get hot. I could hear it chattering, but it still looks like it's in okay shape. I think that it would cut a little bit more efficiently when it gets to the shoulders of the bit if the sides were ground a little bit as well to make them cut a little bit better, a little bit sharper there. But overall, yeah, I can uh, definitely see this as being useful. Fairly cheap way to do it too with that wheel. I think that was maybe $15. I did buy it a few years ago, so. Uh, but yeah, cheap for that. These are cheap too, so. Especially this one, I think this was like two bucks or something. This one is a better one. This used to be an SDS bit. Had a, a wider shank on here to fit in an SDS drill. And I'll try that next. Okay, I don't think I did as good a job sharpening this one because it seems to be getting dull a little bit quicker. Yeah, and it's pretty darn hot too. You can see it was skating around to begin with. Uh, the tip, the carbide in this is quite a bit thicker and the tip, you know, is not very sharp. So it skated around to, you know, punch it with a center punch would help, but that's hard to do with hardened steel. I'm going to confirm this actually now by getting a, a wrench and seeing if I can drill into that. I changed the bit to a thinner one. This is actually a Tapcon bit. This is the kind of bit you would get with those concrete screws, the blue ones. You drill the hole, you drive the screw into concrete or you know brick, whatever. Okay, it still looks like it's in pretty good shape, although there's some breakage there. I did get about three quarters of the way through with that before it stopped. I didn't want to push it. I didn't want to burn up the bit. Although I don't know why I'm not going to use this for anything. That might be part of the reason here with this one. Um, all my concrete bits are used in some way. Uh, some more than others. This one's probably very used and you know, it takes its toll on it, beats it up. But as for, is it possible? Yes, definitely. Is it a good idea? If you got one hole to drill and you've got one bit, then sure, yeah, go ahead and drill it with the bit, sharpen it up, drill in as far as you can go. If it starts to slow down or stop, take it out, sharpen it up again, and you know, try to finish the hole. 
but I wouldn't try to do a whole bunch of holes or even plan on doing a whole bunch of holes because it looks like it won't do it. Got some epoxy here that I'm going to mix up to glue my sharpening stone back together that I dropped on the floor a couple months back. I figure I'll see if it works. If it doesn't, I'm not out anything because it's not much good as it is now. Anyway, mix this up, spread it on, clamp it up, and see how it works. Okay, I gave the epoxy several hours to dry. I'm going to take it out of the clamps now and see if it actually stays together. Um, use this stone with oil uh, most of its life. Just chipped off a little bit there. So the oil might affect the adhesion of the epoxy. I've taken an old grinding belt and clamped it down to my workbench here and I'm going to try to flatten the stone a little bit with that. I don't know if it'll work. Worth a try though, like I said, you know, I'm not losing anything here and I'm definitely not losing anything there. The bells is worn out. Yeah, the idea here is not to make the stone dead flat, but it's to get rid of the epoxy that's in the area where I glued it and also to get rid of any ridges that might be there. I'm not going to spend much time on this. It would be better if I had a diamond flattening uh, plate for this, but I don't. I'm just trying to get, you know, my money's worth out of this stone. I've got a bigger stone that I use mostly now, but this one's handy for knives and stuff like that. So I'd like to have it back.